When we said it's entirely in your making, when we said your life is your karma, in one word, we destroy the heaven and everything else. All the people who worship… whom you worship in that country are people who walked the geography at one time. We looked up to them because of certain qualities. When I say certain qualities, for example, Ram, he's a big icon because you're talking about UP. Uh, in Ayodhya and uh, whatever, misfortunes, his life is full of misfortunes. He is a rightful king because of some political situation he goes to the forest to live in the jungle. With his newly married wife who, who is a princess, she is not made to live in the jungle. And his brother out of his love leaves his wife and his family and goes behind them to take care of them. Oh, they lived in the forest means you watch some stupid movie where uh, they were walking like this and golden colored uh, de deers were floating around and they had such a romantic life. No, I will tell you, you… you go and camp in the forest for three months. <laughs> Believe me, we can't recognize you, you will become like that in three months' time. Yes, you don't know what it means to live in a jungle, not today. Seven thousand… six or seven thousand years ago when it was fully on, jungle was fully on, not like today, it's not a reserve <laughs> Entire country is forest, full of wildlife, living there with a young woman who is not trained to live there is not a simple thing, it's a severe punishment for anybody. As if that was not enough, Ravana came and kidnapped her, Ravana was not a tiger, he was a lion <laughs> So, and then the man <coughs> goes in search of his wife. You know, like uh, I was in a small town in Andhra Pradesh and one little girl, one thirteen, fourteen-year-old girl stands up and asks, Sadhguru, they say that Rama went walking from all the way from Ayodhya to Sri Lanka to find his wife. Is it true? How is it pra possible? It is not practical, isn't it? And I looked at her and said, see, you're still a little girl, but in a few years you'll find a man. When you find a man, do you want a man that if you get lost, he will anyway come looking for you or he thinks it's not practical and find solution <laughs> Find solution in the neighborhood <laughs> uh, Oh, she knows. She wants the man who will come in search. So the man is so… whether he is in love with her or he is committed to his wife, he goes looking down south and finds her after a huge battle, brings her back. She is fully pregnant, again some political situations, again he sends her to the forest. She bears children in the jungle, he doesn't know whether it's boys or girls, no sonogram <laughs> He doesn't know whether it's boy or girl or boys or girls, she delivers twins and he doesn't know. And then he wages a war, he gets into a battle with these boys, not knowing they're his children, he could have killed them. If you kill your own children, it's the worst tragedy that can happen in your life, isn't it? He was almost on the verge, he could have killed them. Fortunately, he did not kill them, but if he had killed, he wouldn't know he would have killed because he went out to kill them. With the intent of killing them, he went out, but somehow he did not succeed and then she died in the jungle, he never saw her face. Do you call this a successful life? I'm asking you. You must say something, otherwise I'm going to bless you <laughs> Do you call this a successful life? No. no. But we worship him. We worship him not because he was a super success of the day. We worship him because it doesn't matter what life threw at him. He remained the same, equanimous. No matter what anybody did to him, he maintained his dharma of being who he is. So we bow down to him. It doesn't matter because what life does to you is not always your choice. What you do is your choice. This is what karma means. So he was completely in charge of his karma. World did all kinds of things to him, but he remained the same. He never became bitter, 
he never became hateful, he never became angry. He continued to do what he was required to do without being pulled off track. So for that quality we worship him because when we said our Sanskriti, you must understand the word Sanskriti, Sam means equanimous, it also means exuberance. Kriti means to do life in an equanimous and exuberant way. Equanimous not in a death-like way, exuberant not in a drunken way, equanimous but exuberant. If you conduct this life like this, you are… this is called as Bharatiya Sanskriti. So he is an epitome of that. All kinds of things were done to him, the worst kind of things. What… what worst things can you happen to you than other than what happened to Rama's life? Tell me, series of tragedies, isn't it? Disaster after disaster, but he is in Sanskriti. He conducts his life with full involvement and equanimous. It doesn't matter what his personal tragedies are. So this is why we worship him, not because he was a super success. So our idea of success is this, if a man can go through this life untouched, no matter what happens, poverty comes, wealth comes, success comes, failure comes, he goes through it untouched, maintaining who he is without losing his humanity. Then we say he's a successful man, then we say he's a Mahapurush. So Rama is worshipped for that. Fabulous, this is a… this is a great point.